Offbeat Sports Podcast. I would have been a tale of two seasons for the Boston Celtics. I probably aged about 10 years just from that series. I'd probably compare myself to like, you know, just a younger, smarter, more handsome, stronger Michael Jordan. Let's go Celtics. Go Patriots. These are these are guys who, when they when you give them a bowl of Cheerios in the morning, they finish every last drop of milk. Absolute uh, clown over here. I'm ready when you are, baby. All right, guys, welcome back to the Offbeat Sports Podcast. Uh, no cross today, so just me, Aiden, will be running it. And alongside the new fill-in host for the day, Charlie Cody. And today we're going to be continuing our interview series called Offbeat Transfer Portal, where we interview Division One college athletes who are making the transition to a different school through the NCAA Transfer Portal. And today we are pleased to be joined by former Holy Cross and new UNLV transfer quarterback, Matt Sluka. Thanks for joining us today, Matt. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So first question for you, we were just kind of wanted you to walk us through your decision to enter the portal. Um, and at what point during the year did you feel that this would be the right path for you to take? And what were some aspects Rather, whether that's academic or athletic, that you kind of wanted to have at your next destination. Um, yeah. So obviously, um, due to COVID, I had um an extra year of eligibility. Um, and with Holy Cross only being a you know four year college, with we had the option to do the fifth year, but um, you know, you're not really working towards much, just a second major. Um, so with my opportunity, obviously, um, you know, I had some good success here at Holy Cross, and I enjoyed my experience. Um, but after you know, it wasn't until really after the season um i kind of told you know my agent my coach um my parents everybody really i don't want to even think about you know the next step whether it's coming back whether it's the nfl um or whether it's you know transferring somewhere else until after the season like i just want to focus on my senior year um you know be with my teammates and you know i'll have two or three weeks to decide after the season um to figure that out so with that being said obviously after the season um i entered the transfer portal um i just figured it was the best move for me um, you know, just to test myself at the next level. Um, obviously I had a good career here at Holy Cross. Um, and I just wanted to challenge myself at this point. Um, you know, I want to take that next step. I want to approach the NFL. Um, and so just playing better competition overall, um, you know, trying a new scheme, trying different things, um, you know, was of interest to me. And so for me, it just made sense to enter the transfer portal. And then, um, you know, after hearing from a lot of schools and everything, um, UNLV just made sense. Um, you know, they reached out, went out there right away for a visit. Um, I think they have a really good offense that fits me. Um, and so, you know, they had they have the resources. They have a beautiful facility. Um, you know, they play really good competition. Um, and I like the coaches. So overall, it just made sense. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to be a part of their team and, uh, you know, get out there. Yeah, so you, you kind of mentioned wanting to play in the NFL. Um, did you feel that UNLV would kind of give you the best chance to do so out of all of the schools that you looked at in, during this process? Um, I think the biggest thing for me was just finding a scheme um, that I fit well. Um, you know, obviously I'm not a pro-style quarterback. Um, and so, you know, finding a scheme that I can be able to be a dual-threat quarterback and do what I do, um, you know, just – that kind of mimics Holy Cross and, you know, things that we were able to succeed, succeed in, but also, you know, just pushing my boundaries and trying different things, trying new things. Um, and Coach Marion, who's the offensive coordinator at UNLV, um, he runs a, a very unique kind of offense that he kind of built and designed himself. It's called the go-go offense. Um, and I think I just would succeed really well in it. And so uh, for me, it just kind of stood out as, you know, a really good opportunity to, you know, do what I do. Absolutely. Uh, talk to us specifically about your visit to UNLV. Uh, what kind of activities did you do there? And uh, how did Coach Odom and Coach Marion uh, sell you on the UNLV system uh, besides the go-go offense? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, mainly it came down to just, you know, the culture of the team, the facilities, um, just the kind of opportunity they had. So, you know, at first we really just took a tour of facilities, um, you know, went in, had a couple of uh, offensive meetings, you know, talked about different things in the playbook. Uh, you know, just things that re relate from Holy Cross and things I've done in common um, and then just things that they saw for my future and, you know, what they think I need to work on. Um, so it was good to just, you know, hear that kind of feedback and hear from a different coach. Um, so it was something new. Um, and then so the facilities, obviously, you know, they have a full football facility, has everything, you know, top to bottom that any type of school would have. Uh, so that was definitely a big draw. Um, their academics, um, they have really good uh, 
they have a really good hospitality program and I'm not sure if I'm going to join it or go into sports management. I'm not sure the, uh, you know, work towards my MBA. I'm not sure the avenue I want to uh, go yet. Um, I just felt like it was a good, you know, location wise, um, you know, a good place to be uh, built up some connections and, you know, some resources out there. Um, and then really just the visit, um, not, we, you know, just you meet, you go around, you look at the facilities, um, you know, you just have individual meetings with each type of coach, um, you know, the strength coach, the nutritionist, um, the trainers, the head coach, offense coordinator, quarterbacks coach. I mean, you really just meet everybody. Um, you go to a couple of lunches, a couple of dinners. Um, we did later one night, we took a helicopter ride um, around Las Vegas uh, just for a couple of minutes um, with the other recruits, which was a cool experience. Um, I don't know if they do that for everybody or, you know, what it is, but um, at Holy Cross, we uh, we went bowling as a team um, when the recruit com recruits come in. So every team has like their own kind of unique thing. Um, obviously, being in Las Vegas, they're fortunate enough to have a helicopter ride. Um, so it was pretty cool. But... Yeah, so you, you kind of touched upon this um, <clears throat> right there saying the new coaches at UNLV. So by the time you had, had ar you had already entered the portal, um, Bob Chesney, your former head coach at Holy Cross, had already um, – or he had announced that he was going to be taking the job at JMU. Um, mm -hmm. He brought a couple of coaches, including your former offensive coordinator, a couple of your former teammates. We just had Jacob Dobbs on the show. Um, so was JMU ever, like, on your list of schools you were considering? Um, or did you kind of think it would be beneficial to see what you could do in a different style of offense, learn from a couple of different football minds or on the UNLV staff? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was like, you know, at first when I coached Chesney, um, you know, we kind of first, first had heard about Syracuse and and then we heard about JMU. Um, you know, we were talking about it before I went. But for me, it was kind of just made more sense to go somewhere else um, and kind of learn from somebody else and just, you know, be in a place that like I didn't want to, you know, was something new for him as well. So I wasn't really sure the situation he was going to be in. Um, so, you know, it wasn't really I would say it was wasn't really, you know, strongly in the mix. Um, but, you know, I think I was just more going about myself and kind of figuring out my own direction, um, you know, before I did anything else, really. It's about, you know, it's about planning my future. You know, he's going to do what he has to do. But and I, you know, I have a great relationship with him. But, uh, you know, I think it was time for me to just try something different. Absolutely. Uh, looking forward, UNLV just wrapped up their season with a nine and five record and a bowl berth. Uh, what are some skills you feel you can immediately add to their offense and uh, to continue their success? Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know if you guys saw the news, but their quarterback actually transferred to Georgia um, and he's going to be, you know, the quarterback over there at Georgia. Um, and so just with their offense coming back, um, you know, being a dual threat guy, he's not really a dual, to, uh, dual threat type of quarterback. Um, and so just because of how explosive their run game is and how like how much they use their run game um, within their pass game and everything, I think just being able to have a dual threat quarterback back there is um, going to elevate their offense to the next level. Um, you know, just. I don't know, being consistent, just these all little things that you just got to do to make sure, you know, fight, win the job, and then, uh, you know, just fall out every weekend. It's my last season, so I just want to make it special. Uh, definitely. On that note, what are some realistic expectations uh, the team should have for the 2024 season? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think the biggest thing is recognizing that with a 12-team playoff, um, you know, if you win the Mountain West, you're going to get into that playoff. Um, and so I think that's really the biggest thing is just making sure – you know, we show up every day ready to win the Mountain West first um, and then try and get our spot in the playoffs uh, with this new bracket and, um, you know, just make a run in there. Once you're in the playoffs, it's a single game elimination. So it's kind of, you know, it's time to go at that point. But, yeah, I think if you uh, I think if you went out, you know, you got some good we got some good non-conference games. You play Houston week one um, and then you play we play Syracuse is coming to us. So we'll be playing, you know, a couple of teams that would definitely help our schedule you know, strength the schedule out and trying to, you know, fight for a top 12 spot. Yeah. So as you would know, these days, NIL is a huge, a huge part of college athletics, um, especially in, in football. So how big of a role did NIL play in your recruitment and how did that factor in with like each school's recruiting pitch to you? Yeah. So it's kind of different. And like, um, you know, some schools, obviously they call you and, they just have money to throw. Um, but there's kind of, you know, you got to kind of look past that and look, look to see what your real opportunity is there. Um, you know, is it better to go to a big school and make money and probably, you know, take the chance of not playing or is it better to go to the school, you know, where you have the opportunity to play. 
So for me, I mean, I uh, my for my biggest thing was I wanted to play. I wanted to go to a school and I want to play. Um, you know, obviously money is nice and being played, paid as a college athlete is, you know, unbelievable. But um, for me, it wasn't really about the money. Um, you know, I figured with my Holy Cross degree and they were actually allowing me to graduate first. So that was one of the biggest things that I focused on. Um, most schools didn't really want me to graduate first. They wanted me to transfer right away. Um, so with UNLV allowing me to graduate first, that was kind of like the biggest thing for me. Um, so, you know, I wasn't really, the money was kind of secondary. It wasn't really, um, you know, a primary focus for me at all. It was more of my graduation than just having opportunity to play. Yeah. So relating to NIL, as you may have heard, next season brings back the famous EA College Football video game series, which will feature real player likeness for all FBS schools for the first time in the game's history through the use of NIL. Um, so we're wondering what are your thoughts about being in the game next year? And was this something that you were aware of before committing to a school like UNLV in the FBS? <laughs> no. Um, so honestly, I'm not, I don't really play too many video games. Uh, so I wasn't, I knew the game was coming out, but I didn't, you know, think about being in it. Um, now that I know I'm going to be in it, I will probably be purchasing like three copies just to have, um, you know, just to have stores. It's going to be a cool keepsake. Um, but I didn't recognize him until my brother texted me after. Um, and he was, he was like, I can't wait to play with you in the video game. So it was funny, but, uh, that was really the first time I even thought about it. Yeah, and that just about wraps up today's episode. Thank you, Matt, for uh, taking the time to do this with us. Call them all, text them.